I'm wondering if you're the kind of person who adored maths as a teenager. Now, if you did... You probably know this already. You were very much in the minority. That was the experience for teacher Eddie Wu. Picture him year 10. It wasn't so much that he didn't like maths. It just didn't come that naturally to him. He he just didn't really understand why it all mattered. You know, why do any of these numbers matter? That was his question to his teachers. Now, as somewhat as the result of his curiosity and his natural-born communication skills, Eddie Wu did fall in love with maths and went on to be both a maths teacher and an internet sensation. It's his care for his teachers, his desire to make a difference in the world and his tech know-how that saw him setting up a, a little channel called WooTube, which is literally changing the experience of maths education for thousands of teenagers. And it's a story being told tonight, thanks to Australian Story on the ABC at 8pm. Eddie Wu, welcome to Afternoons. It's great to be here, Claire. Maths didn't come easily to you. Tell me about the moment that you got it. For me, I think I was trying to actually wrap my head around how to explain a mathematical concept when I'd enrolled at university to be a teacher. And we all had assignments to say, okay, you have to deliver, you know, a pretend lesson to uh, your cl- your <laughs> tutorial at school, uh, at university. And I thought, okay, well, I better wrap my head around this so I can explain it. And I went back and I thought, how hard can this be? I went to school, I learned this stuff. And, you know, much to my horror, I opened up to the page that I was supposed to talk through and just my mind just went blank. And I thought, okay, I'm going to have to start from scratch. I'm going to go back to square one and try and understand this idea from the beginning. Try and understand why on earth, like, is this in the syllabus for a reason or just someone etched in stone once upon a time at the top of a mountain? No, all students must learn this. (laughs) So I thought, okay, look, I'm going to do my research. And it was a a concept called first principles in in a topic called calculus, which I had done at school. And I sort of could answer the questions, but I just never comprehended it until that moment where I forced myself to explain it to my friends, to my um, fellow university students. And that's where I realized, oh, wait, okay, if you ask the question of maths, why is this important? What does it speak to me about the world, not just how do I answer the question, then actually it speaks really deeply to that human desire to understand the world around you and be able to appreciate what makes it work? Anyone who's watched your WooTube channel knows that one of the skills that you have is, is yes, making meaning out of these things that, well, we don't necessarily understand their practical application very often. In your classes, we can hear the sounds of students going, ah, oh, I get it. We can hear laughter and communication. You're the co-head of mathematics now at Cherry Brook Technical High School. And you're known as someone who loves those students who don't quite get it. For you, however, the satisfaction of being a teacher, well, it wasn't what your parents thought you would do with your life, was it? No, they were quite surprised and I think honestly taken aback for, you know, the news that I told them when, you know, I want to do education, I'm interested in working in a school. In our country, Australia, you know, teachers are not exactly held in very high regard and they don't earn a huge amount of money either. And so when they heard me say this, there was very much a sense of, but, you know, there are things you could do where you could earn loads more money and you could have higher status. Like, why would you choose this? I and for me, that your parents were migrants from Malaysia yeah. and they had sacrificed a, a lot to kind of get you guys over here. And I knew that you could speak many, many languages. And you tell the story in Australian story of your, your mother had some wishes for you. Yeah, she definitely came from a very well off background. So it was, um, I think, compounded the fact that, you know, any migrant, not just from an Asian background. I remember I met a friend from uni and he was Hungarian Mm, and he said to me, oh yeah, 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 that's my parents to a T. They've just given up so very much to come here um, and, you know, raise a family with very little support, even understanding of the language here in Australia. And, you know, they did that so that we could have a better life so that we could have access to education that would open doors that we would never have had access to if we'd been born back where we came from. And so in addition to that, my mom, my mom coming from a very uh, well-off background and you know having quite a bit of privilege where she came from, I think it was quite shocking. And she spent 
months and months trying to argue me out of becoming a teacher. And it was very difficult for her. I was quite sad because she actually passed away in my first year of university while we still, we never really saw eye to eye. And so it's a bit bittersweet Mm -hmm. uh, knowing Mm -hmm. that, you know, now I've come this far and I would have loved for her to have seen it. But I hope, you know, my dad, I'm very lucky that he's very proud of uh, what I've achieved. And so I hope that she would be too. Look, on tonight's uh, Australian story, New South Wales Department of Education Secretary Mark Scott says that you're the kind of teacher he would like to clone. So I have absolutely no doubt your your mother would be enormously proud of what you've done. This theme of your mother passed away, I understand, Eddie, from cancer. And this theme of cancer was actually the genesis of what started WooTube. Tell us about that one student that you were trying to get through to when you first started recording your maths lessons. It was all the way back in 2012 and I had a student in my class and he was diagnosed with cancer, which is just, I mean, I was I was shattered when my mom was diagnosed with cancer. To hear that news of yourself when you're meant to have your entire life out in front of you, um, I just couldn't imagine how difficult uh, an experience he was going through. Mm. But what I could imagine and what I knew was coming for him was that his whole life was about to be turned upside down. And it was. He spent uh, weeks at a time in treatment. And of course, you know, for any cancer treatment, just kind of wreaks havoc with your immune system. And so there was so much time that he lost from school. I thought, He's not going to be able to make it. He's going to come back to school. We're going to get him for a few weeks here or there. But a lot of people have had that experience where something in mathematics didn't click. And then when you came mm-hmm. back the next time to try and learn it, you're like, what What even is all mm-hmm. of this stuff? I, don't, I can't piece together everything. It's like trying to do a jigsaw puzzle and Which you don't have point. all the pieces. Which is the point so many of our listeners I know would have given up on maths. In the past. Absolutely. And I can, I can understand that. It's a very, uh, I mean, high school's challenging for everyone. You're going through intense uh, changes as a person and lots of emotions swirling around. Your life is busy. So I understand why, you know, the wheels fall off for people and um, they never quite, you know, to mix metaphors, they never quite get back on the horse to understand mathematics. Mm. And I didn't want this to happen to this student. So I thought, you know what, this is not going to look crash hot, but it'll It'll do. I'm just going to get my phone. I put it up on top of a table in my classroom and you could see the whiteboard. You could hear my voice as I explain concepts. And I just sent him, I sent the whole class actually, because I didn't want to single him out. Um, I sent them all links to the videos as they went up so that if there was a concept that they'd missed or that they just wanted a bit of revision on, they could go back at any time. They could watch, rewatch, stop, skip, anything they wanted. And for him, that was just, you know, it wasn't the same, of course, as being in the classroom, but it kind of tidied him over and it helped him to still be a part of the class and share that learning experience with us. And once the videos were there, other people found out about it and it just sort of took on a life of its own. Your channel has now had over two and a half million views, in fact. What sort of stories do you get back from students from overseas or or places in Australia where you've never visited about what maths means to them now? For me, it's been quite eye-opening to hear from such a variety of people, Um, some of whom, as you pointed out, are in other countries, some of whom have left high school long, long ago. And honestly, I have no idea how they stumbled on my (laughs) videos, but I think they and I have been pleasantly surprised by the fact that, you know, a lot of people uh, feel like they don't like maths because there was some point at which they didn't comprehend it and it just sort of became a difficult experience for them. But these people who've been going onto the channel um, have found, actually, there's nothing about maths that's inherently intimidating or scary or impossible to learn. Everyone just needs a different kind of explanation. And it seems like the stuff that I've been putting online um, has really been you know, scratching an itch that a lot of people have. It's in language that's easy to understand because, like I mentioned before, stuff doesn't come naturally to me. So I have to get it down to something that's simple and easy to understand. And if I can pass that on to people around the world, I just it's the icing on the cake, really. We're speaking with rock star maths teacher Eddie Wu, otherwise known as Mr. Wu Tube on his website and on Instagram and so on. But he is changing the face of maths teaching. He's using technology to do that. And he's someone who is setting a new standard when it comes to teaching something of interest, attaching meaning 
to education. And Eddie, I can't think of a, a quality that we really want more of when it comes to teaching. You know, you share with many great barristers throughout history and actors and so on this, this ability to perform and to bring passion to what you do. How important do you think that is to your communication of maths and its meanings? Look, it's amazing, actually, that when I studied four years of drama in high school from years nine to 12, I actually did that because I was terrified of public speaking and standing up in front of people. I would just, you know, that that ball would grow in my stomach and I'd start, my hands would start shaking. And so for me, that was just a way to overcome, you know, that that sort of uh, fright and anxiety because communication, it matters. Uh, Things of importance are often missed because we don't communicate them properly, even though they are important. Mm. So I think in some ways, you know, it's it's at the heart of what makes uh, my lessons work and what brings students along with me. I like to think that if I can bring my A game and my enthusiasm and energy to the classroom, no matter what kind of a day a student is having, you can't help but be sort of brought along for the experience. And so I think that, you know, it's part of what makes mathematics, you know, it's not that it's scary or or impossible to understand, but if it's in an exciting and entertaining and engaging way and shown in a way that, you know, I really want my students to understand. Uh, a lot of the things that people have said to me, oh, that was a really helpful explanation. I didn't think about them in a premeditated way. Mm. I was just in the classroom and I saw that glazed look over my students' eyes and my my explanation that I'd prepared didn't, you know, land with them. So I had to think of something new and, or, you know, being up on stage and improvising, that's one of the key skills that, you know, an actor has to have. And that's become really useful to me in the classroom. Eddie, if you had to explain to me the rewards of maths, what's something you would tell me? Because I, I might still be sitting here thinking, you know, what's the point? Why do I need maths in my life? You know, I've, I've survived okay. I've got a calculator. What am I missing out on? I'd probably say two things in answer to that question. When you're thinking about what am I missing out on if I don't have that a real mathematical understanding of things? I mean, firstly, um, yes, you point out you do have a calculator, but I'll, I'd also like to mention you have to use that calculator. I often tell my students a calculator is just a tool for you to use. And if you don't know how to use it, then... It's just going to be a tool, and that's not very helpful to anyone. I've lost count of the number of times that I've had to explain to someone, you know what, if you add 10% to something because it's GST, and then you take 10% off of it because it's on sale or something like that, then it doesn't go back to its original price. It's something else. It's mm-hmm. different. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's actually cheaper than the original. <laughs> and for, to understand that, as a simple, everyday mathematical, numerical reality, yeah, sure, we have access to technology which makes things uh, much easier to calculate than ever before. And I'm not going to be upset with anyone if they don't, you know, know their times tables up to 15 off by heart. But, you know, I like to say to my students, machines, calculators, computers, they're for answers. Humans are for questions. You know, it's only going to be a person who decides what's the important thing, what matters in this situation, how are we going to analyze the numbers here? And then I can tell a computer to do whatever job's necessary. And that's the first thing, just the fact that practically speaking, there's lots of numerical reality all around us. Secondly, though, I'd love to think that anyone who understands mathematics in a deeper way than just your basic plus minus, plus minus times divide uh, gains a richer and a deeper understanding of the world. I mean, I'll give you an example. If you pick up, if you go for a walk into a park and you pick up a flower, a flower is a beautiful object. Everyone can agree on that. But it's also an intensely mathematical object. Like if you can just picture in your mind, say a sunflower, you know, you've got that, that tall stalk and then right at the top, you've got that, those brilliant yellow, bright orange leaves. And in the middle, you've got all these sort of seeds, florets that are arranged in this very distinctive pattern. They're kind of this spiral what is it that makes that shape the way it is? And actually, there's this beautiful piece of mathematics called the golden ratio that explains exactly why they are in that perfect shape and why that makes so much sense for a flower. Mm -hmm. Now, do you need to know that? Well, no, you don't. But once you do grasp your, put your mind around uh, a crazy concept like that, it allows you to look at the world through new eyes. I mean, I, I'm very short-sighted and um, I've got quite <laughs> poor vision. And when I put glasses on, yeah. I can see the world around me in a whole new way. And 
I think of mathematics a bit like that pair of glasses. Thanks to this Australian story um, that we'll be viewing tonight. You're about to get a whole lot of extra attention as if you didn't have enough already, you know, with your 38,000 subscribers on YouTube. And I said two and a half million. You're actually nearly closer to four million views now. Um, My research is updated as we've been chatting. Eddie, if I gave you a magic wand and allowed you to wave it in whichever way you like tonight, what is it that you would like educationalists to know about improving Australia's education system? What is it that we could be doing to support our teachers and support our students? Wow, if you gave me a magic wand, I would look at it for a long time and think because there's so many things that need to be done, honestly, in order to change the situation that we're in. If I had to pick out just one, I think it would be, I want everyone in education um, and even you know parents and, and children, young children to understand We need, particularly in the maths field, we need the absolute best people we can standing in our classrooms, you know, kneeling on the ground beside our kids in year four, um, standing up the front of the class, helping the year 10s who've Mm -hmm. been doing mathematics for 11 years because they've been forced to, to help them understand in a dynamic way, um, what is mathematics? Why is it important? And how can I make sense of it? How can I connect it to what my life is now, which is different to the person sitting next to me and is different to what it was 10 years ago? We need the absolute best people who have mathematical understanding, who have a passion for kids and helping them grow as people. We need them in our classrooms. And time and time again, I see amazing people with huge amounts of talent and they look at education and teaching as if, well, that's, you know, those who can do and those who can't teach. And I, that's just such a tragedy. And so many problems unfold from that, you know, um, millions of dollars are being poured into, uh, you know, national programs for increasing amounts of STEM participation among um, students across the country. Uh, federally, we understand that it's a, it's a big issue. What we really need is the teachers on the ground to be able to convey to our students, you know what, mathematics, it matters for everyone. And that understanding it, it's going to help all of us in society, no matter whether you're an actuary or an engineer or a business owner or a chef, wherever you're going to be, mathematics can help you do that better. And that's what I wish everyone understood. Eddie Wu, you're a gift to us. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure, Claire. Thanks so much for your time. Eddie Wu, who's co-head of mathematics at Cherry Brook Technical High School, also runs the very popular WooTube. You can find him at Mr. WooTube or on his website at the similar name. And his story will be told tonight on Australian Story. That's Monday, 1st of May, today, 8pm on ABC and ABC iView. I think you're going to love it.